Welcome back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to install all of the necessary software and set up our hardware. So let's get started. I've already installed LabVIEW and NIVSA, so let's install links. I'll launch a browser and browse to labviewmakerhub.com slash links. Then I'll click Download Now. This brings you to the LabVIEW Tools Network. I'll click the Download button. And if you're not logged in, you'll be asked to log in and then taken to this page. So first we'll install VI Package Manager. This manages add-ons for LabVIEW. So I'll click Download VIPM for Windows. Once the download's complete, I'll click on it to launch it. Click Next, accept the license agreement, choose an installation location. We'll just leave this default. Click Install. And then we'll just jump ahead to this final screen and we'll uncheck the box that says Launch VI Package Manager because we don't want to launch it just yet. Then I'll click Finish. Now I'll download links. In the Step 2 section, I'll click Download Toolkit. When you click on a VIPM link, it will automatically be opened by a VI Package Manager if it's installed. So I'll click Launch Application, and this opens VI Package Manager, which will automatically load links. Since this is the first time we've launched Package Manager, it needs to refresh the list of packages from the network. So click OK. It'll take a minute to scan all the packages available on the LabVIEW Tools Network. Then it'll bring you to the Links Installer screen. On this screen, we'll choose the version of LabVIEW we want to install to, and click Install. Package Manager then shows us a list of everything that it will install. We can see Links and the Toolbox. This is all we need, so we'll click Continue. I'll click I Agree and I'll accept the terms of use. Package Manager needs to restart LabVIEW to install the software, so I'll click OK to allow it. Package Manager creates a local connection to LabVIEW, so I'll check Allow on private and public networks and click Allow Access. Then I'll click Yes to accept the license agreement and Links starts installing. We'll jump ahead just a minute to the point where we're done installing, and you'll see both Links and the toolbox installed with no errors. So we'll click Finish. We can close Package Manager, and we can close our browser. At this point, we need to restart LabVIEW. Since we installed something new, restarting LabVIEW will populate all of the help, examples, and palettes. After closing LabVIEW, I'll launch it again. And our software is ready to go. The next step is to set up the hardware. So I've attached my breadboard and the SparkFun breadboard to the holder, and I'll connect the breadboard to my PC via USB. When I do that, you can see the device setup window pops up, and Windows starts automatically installing drivers for the breadboard. Now let's use Windows Device Manager to check and make sure that the driver is installed successfully. In Windows 8, I'll right click on the Start menu and choose Device Manager. Then I'll expand Ports, and we can see a USB serial port, COM3, and that's our breadboard. We'll need to remember this COM3 for later. I'll click the X in the upper right to close Device Manager. The last thing that we need to do is load the Lynx firmware onto the breadboard. From LabVIEW, I'll click Tools, Maker Hub, Lynx, and then Lynx Firmware Wizard. This launches the Lynx Firmware Wizard. From there, I'll choose Device Family and pick SparkFun. Under device type, I'll choose Redboard. 
The firmware program interface is the method we'll use to deliver the firmware. The only option is USB serial for now. Then I'll click Next. Now we need to select the COM port for our breadboard. We saw this in Device Manager, so I know it's COM3. I'll click the drop down and choose COM3. Then I'll click Next. Next, we choose the firmware version. The breadboard only has one option, but some devices will have more. Then I'll click Next. Now that the firmware is uploaded to the breadboard, and you'll notice the TX and RX lights flash fast to indicate that data is being transferred to the board. If your TX and RX lights aren't flashing, that means the firmware is not being deployed correctly. Once the firmware is done deploying, we'll be taken to the summary page. If everything seemed to go okay, we'll click launch example. If you suspect something went wrong, you can click view log to see a deployment log. Our deployment seemed to work, so I'll click Launch Example. This brings up a Lynx example that'll let us blink an LED. In the Serial Port dropdown, I'll click COM3, and the Digital Output Channel is already set to 13. This is connected to a user LED on the breadboard. So we'll leave that as it is, and we'll click the Run button in the upper left corner. It'll take just a second for LabVIEW to connect to the breadboard, and when the connection's established, you'll see the RX and TX lights flash again. And then I can click on the LED control on the front panel to toggle the user LED on the breadboard. I'll click stop to stop the example. And then I want to show you one final trick. In order to speed up the connection between LabVIEW and the breadboard, I'll change the device driver settings. To do this, I'll go back to Device Manager by right-clicking on the Start menu and choosing Device Manager. I'll expand Ports, and then I'll right-click on the breadboard, which is COM3, and choose Properties. Then I'll click the Port Settings tab and click Advanced. Here, under BM Options, I'll change the latency timer from 16 milliseconds to one millisecond. This speeds up the rate at which lab you can communicate with the red board. So I'll click OK and click OK and then close Device Manager. You can see on our previous run, we were updating the LED 62 times per second. Now when I click Run, we should get a much faster loop rate. So we've almost doubled our speed. I'll click stop to stop the VI, and that'll do it for our basic setup. The breadboard's now ready to use with LabVIEW and Lynx. All of the setup that we did in this section should be one-time setup. You shouldn't need to deploy the firmware again unless you load different firmware onto the breadboard. Make sure to join us in the next section, where we'll look at the code for this example and modify it to blink the LED automatically at a specified rate. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.